Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist, a book summarizing app with thousands of the best-selling nonfiction books to help you become a better you. And Blinkist puts these books into a 15-minute text and audio explainer that they call Blinks. And these Blinks help you with any part of your life. You can read or listen about personal growth, career and success, psychology, productivity. Blinkist has all the titles that can help you in your everyday life. Personally, I like to use Blinkist when I'm commuting. The 15 minute drive is perfect for me to get one book in in the meantime. And I've been diving in a lot more into the psychology field where I like to expand my creativity and learn a bit about that. Or one of my favorite titles that I found, The Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler. Where it pretty much correlates intrinsic motivation to in quote unquote impossible goals, such as landing on the moon, running a four minute mile, or even smaller things like doing something you love for a living, being an entrepreneur, running a media company, whatever it is. And that's just one example that Blinkist has. I mean, it has some of the best sellers in the world. For an example, if you're a fan of James Clear, his best seller Atomic Habits is also on here. That pretty much breaks down creating good habits and shedding bad ones. Books about talking to strangers and all different kinds of bestsellers. And I highly recommend you guys trying Blinkist today. The first 100 people to go to this link are going to get an unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. And remember, there's a 7-day free trial in case you want to try it out beforehand and you can cancel it at any time. So we got some interesting footage on Conor McGregor's latest sparring video in preparation for his Dustin Poirier rubber match. Now there were some similarities. He focused on leg kicks. He said that this was a preparation of his and it actually showed in the sparring video. He threw a lot of leg kicks, but his leg was not wrapped, which was a bit different than what he said after the fight. I don't know how far out the sparring session was from the fight, but it doesn't look like his leg has any kind of fracture in it. I mean, he would not be throwing kicks like this. He threw a lot of kicks at his sparring partner and he has some good vintage left hands. Good back step on the left counter as the opponent extended with a jab. Notice that his opponent is also southpaw, so he does have that right to mimic a little bit of what Dustin Poirier does, or at least how he looks. He has some good combinations on the aggression. Good light one to up high to expose the body as the opponent guards up and fades away, citing the opponent's check right hook that Dustin Poirier throws a lot. Dustin Poirier likes to end the combination or end any exchange with his lead right hook. And for the majority of it, when he threw his hands, Connor was extremely precise as always. Some really good shot selection and delivered with some good power. And there was this moment right here where Connor bobs under and weaves to his right in order to create leverage for his right hook and, more importantly, get the opponent to guard up as they become defensive on that head movement. They think something big is going to come out there. The opponent guards his left side, blocks the right hook, but what the right hook is meant to do is shift the guard. This is something that high level boxers, high level fighters are able to do to their opponents. Instead of trying to create damage with every single punch, shifting the guard or the motion of the opponent is something that is very high level. And from this, he's able to get that opening down the center with a precise left straight. That was some really good work from Conor McGregor. In my opinion, one of the best things he showed in this whole sparring session. Another great thing that he showed was constantly going to front teeps to the lead leg. So these low front kicks are conditioning the opponent because what you see afterward is he comes up high instead as you see the opponent i guess attempt to check i mean you don't really check a teep like that but he brings his lead leg forward and leaves his head exposed this is something i actually have not seen from fighters maybe you guys can remember but when's the last time a fighter conditioned an opponent with low front kicks into a high front kick that is something great to see from conor mcgregor it's just he didn't show that in the fight necessarily you'll see immediately after the counter fakes it again he fakes like he's gonna throw a low teep and the opponent picks his knee up it causes the opponent to plant himself in space, Connor able to get aggressive with his hands now, lands a stinging jab and tries to follow up with a left overhand. And you'll see multiple times throughout this where Connor lowers his hands, sometimes feints low, and comes up high with an attack. This is also something he did not show in the fight at all, and it creates a sense of defenselessness that the opponent observes. They see the low hands, they see Connor leaning forward, and this is the same thing he's done to so many fighters in the past of getting them to extend in their punches to try to hit him in the head. He pulls on their punches, back steps away, and catches them very precisely with the left hand. These feints and baits are something that would have been great to see from Connor in that fight with Dustin Poirier, but there was something at the end of the sparring session here. He reaches forward, extends far out with a left straight that gets himself out of stance. He walks out of stance when he attempts the left straight, and this walking out of stance thing that he did here happened throughout the entire sparring session. 
position, mostly on the defensive. When the opponent was throwing punches at him or kicks at him, you'll see many times that Connor walks backwards instead of keeping a stance while moving backwards to be more secure and in the position to counter at all times. When you're walking backwards like this, you're not going to be able to counter that effectively and you leave yourself a lot more vulnerable. This was not a great thing to see from Conor McGregor in my opinion and he actually did this in the fight with Dustin Poirier and got himself put in a very bad position but it wasn't just this it's also the fact that Conor swung out a left straight without moving anywhere without any kind of footwork shooting out the left straight without any footwork which is very uncharacteristic for how Conor usually fights and the fact that he walked back after trying to block Dustin's right hook put himself in position to get caught by Dustin's jab which set up everything else look at here look how Conor switches backwards like this look at the position he put himself in it's the same thing he was showing in the sparring session when punches flew at him he always shifted backwards and then forced to switch back into his southpaw stance and even got tagged by his sparring partner a couple times the difference with Dustin Poirier was he settled on a jab to set up everything else afterward as Conor switches back at the southpaw he switches into Dustin's jab and everything's already too late he allowed Dustin to get in that close Conor did throw a body kick but in that position where Conor forced to switch stances back into his southpaw it was way too late Dustin was already on the momentum and chased Connor down. After those left hands landed for Dustin Poirier, that is when Connor actually got stunned a little bit, went in for the takedown, clinched up, and that's where the whole grappling situation happened. Where Connor pulled the guillotine, Dustin Poirier dominated on top, the leg break happens, all that stuff. It all stemmed from that exchange from Connor walking backwards and getting tagged by the jab. It's the same thing he did in sparring, but it worked for him in sparring. It just did not work for him in the fight. You're not able to use the same kind of head movement, and your movements become very obvious to the aggressive opponent. Notice here, Connor's in the southpaw stance. The opponent goes to the body with a jab and then right hand to the head. The only difference here is his opponent is orthodox, whereas Dustin was southpaw, but it's a very similar thing. When this right hand comes out there and it skids off Connor's head, you see Connor walking backwards out of his stance, and the opponent chases him down. Another pump jab, fakes the other, and throws another right cross now this one it looks like connor was able to slip on the punch in fact this worked out twice for connor in two different instances one while his opponent was orthodox and one while his opponent was southpaw worked both times on him and it's probably a reason why he went into the dustin Poirier fight doing the same thing so connor actually looked pretty decent in sparring he did some things out there that i've never seen him do before he showed to have a little bit better movement than he showed in the fight but we do know in the sparring session that most likely his leg is not fractured he was able to throw a lot of leg kicks he threw some creative techniques out there precise left hands but he still showed the same thing switching his stance backwards not keeping his stance intact and ultimately this causes him to get off balance so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy my content make sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video